to become Pope, the Catholic Church, and shepherd to over one billion faithful. What requirements must you have for this lofty position? First, be a Catholic, and second, be a man. Which seems a little thin, and while it's technically possible for a regular Sunday Catholic to become Pope, the last time this happened was essentially never, because becoming Pope isn't like becoming President. You can't just run for office. Selecting the Pope is an inside job, and the men who do it are the Cardinals, and while in theory they can select any Catholic man to become Pope, in practice they prefer to elevate one of their own. The last time a non-cardinal became pope was more than 600 years ago, so while it isn't an official requirement, it's an unofficial official requirement. Thus, in order to become pope, you'll first need to be a cardinal, and to do that, you need to start climbing the Catholic corporate ladder. Step 1. Become a priest. Unlike some churches where you can just fill out a form online and poof, ordained, the Catholic Church treats becoming a priest as a real, you need training profession, so you're going to require a lot of education, usually a college degree in Catholic philosophy and then a master's in divinity. In addition to your educational qualifications, you must also be a man, unmarried, and willing to remain celibate. If you meet these requirements and have been working with the church, then you can be officially ordained as a priest, which basically means you get to run a Catholic church or work with another priest who does. But you want to move onward, and to do that you need to take the job of the man who just made you a priest. Step 2. Become a bishop. Bishops are a much more select group. While there are about 400,000 Catholic priests worldwide, there are only about 5,000 bishops. While priests get churches, bishops get cathedrals, from which they oversee a number of local churches. To advance your career, you must wait for a bishop in your area to be forced into retirement at age 75 or die sooner than that, freeing up space for you. But you can't just apply because there's already a secret list of potential bishops that's updated every three years based on who the current bishops in your area think would make a good replacement for one of their own. To be on that list, in addition to the obvious requirement of being a pious person, you should also be at least 35 years old, have been a priest for at least five years, and have a doctorate in theology or equivalent. Assuming you're all these things, your name may or may not be on the secret list. The local bishops then give that list to the Pope's ambassador for your country, known as the Apostolic Nuncio. The Nuncio picks three priests from the list, does in-depth research on them, conducts interviews, and selects the one he thinks is best. But it's not over, because the Nuncio sends his report to Vatican City and the Congress of Bishops who work there reviewing potential appointments from around the world. If the Congress of Bishops doesn't like any of the three candidates, they can tell the nuncio to start over, returning to the list, picking other three candidates, doing more research, more interviews, and sending off the results. When the Congress of Bishops is happy with one of the nuncio's candidates, that name is given to the Pope, who can reject the candidate and start the whole process over. It shouldn't be a surprise that from vacancy to a bishop's replacement can take months and on occasion years. But assuming a bishop in your area retired or died at the right time, and you were on the secret list of good priests, and the nuncio picked you, and you made it through his interview, and the Congress of Bishops approved you, and the Pope didn't veto you, poof, now you're a bishop. But you're still not on top. The penultimate promotion is step number three, become a cardinal. Despite the fancy name and snazzy red outfits to match, cardinals are not the bosses of bishops. They are bishops, just with an additional title and additional responsibilities, the most notable of which is electing the new pope. The only way to become a cardinal is to get the current pope to appoint you as one, and of the 5,000 bishops, only about 200 are ever cardinals. But let's say your ambition doesn't go unnoticed by the pope and he makes you a cardinal. Now it's time to play the waiting game for his death or retirement, and with popes, death is vastly more more likely. When either happens, the cardinals under the age of 80 are brought to Vatican City where they are isolated from the outside world, presumably by taking away their cell phones and tablets and carrier pigeons. Once sequestered, the election of a new pope can begin. These elections are never exactly the same because the ex-pope leaves instructions on how he wants his replacements to be picked, but in general it works like this. Four times a day, the cardinals go to the Sistine Chapel to vote, and to become pope, one of them must get a two-thirds majority. There's a big dose of mustn't be too hasty here, as the cardinals don't just raise their hands or use a modern preferential voting system, but instead write down one name on a piece of paper, stand before the altar, and say a long Latin phrase before officially casting the ballot. Once all the cardinals have done this, the votes are counted and then burned. This is why TV news stations covering the election of pope use super modern HD live streaming cameras to look at a chimney. If the smoke is black, no new pope. The high victory threshold and tediously slow voting process is why it takes so long to elect a pope. It's usually at least two weeks of voting, four times a day, six days a week, with one day a week reserved for prayer, but the record length is three years. Assuming you eventually win the support of your fellow cardinals, you have one final thing to do before becoming pope. Pick yourself a new name. There's no formal rule, and you can name yourself anything you like, but it's tradition to take the name of a previous pope. Upon the acceptance of your new name, the final ballots are burned clean to make the smoke turn white and announce to the world that a new pope has been selected. So that's the career path. Be born into the right half of the population, become one of a billion Catholics, then one of 400,000 priests, then one of 5,000 bishops, then one of 200 cardinals, wait for the current pope to die or retire, and convince two-thirds of your fellow cardinals to select you as the one, the only, pope.
Mr. Anderson is on the house. Today is Tuesday, February 28th, 2023. Please rise for a moment of silence and a pledge to the flag. The Grace Fellowship Church is having a Gowns with Grace event. On March 25th, high school students can come and select prom gowns and other formal attire to wear for prom at no cost. Currently, the church is accepting donations of formal gowns, jewelry, and other things. They can drop off donations in room 226 or at the church between the hours of 9 to 4 by March 17th. Attention yearbook staff, there is limited time remaining before our final deadline and we must meet that deadline to get our yearbooks back in time for the end of the school year. We need all of you to help with a strong finish. We will be meeting in room 318 after school today. See you then. Attention newspaper writers, articles are due to the discussion post by Wednesday. Please see an editor if you have any questions. Also, attention everyone. On Wednesday, March 15th, students will be participating in a fun activity day hosted by the Student Council. While 11th and 12th grade students are watching the musical presentation, 9th and 10th graders will participate in activities teachers signed up to run. This includes ping pong, friendship bracelet making, and basketball. Once the upperclassmen are done watching the musical, it will then be their turn to participate in the fun activities. Students will sign up on the first come first serve basis during Mountaineer Block tomorrow. If you are performing in the musical, unfortunately, you will not be able to participate. Now, over to good old Mr. Lockhard with the news. news. Come out on Saturday, March 4th to the, the Glow Out Night Neon Minithon to raise, to raise funds for Four Diamonds. We will have a variety of games and food, Kona Ice, a mechanical bull, a dance party, and of course, lots of fun. If you didn't get a registration form last week, please see, please see Mrs. Sosi or Mrs. Hopkin, or get one from the Minithon board in the hallway. Please get them in as soon as possible in order to get, be guaranteed our very cool t-shirts. And for the first time ever, we are using a student DJ, which is senior Jaden Mentor. So come out to see him rock the EIMS gym. Also, tomorrow is pajama day, so don't forget to wear your comfy pajamas. We will also be selling glow sticks tomorrow at lunch for $1 a piece to wear with your blackout on Thursday. Don't forget, it is all for the kids. Also, out of 19 national holidays observed on February 28th, these are just some of my favorites. We got National Essay Day, National Vegan Lipstick Day, and a classic, National Pancake Day. Now, back to the main desk. Well, wow, that's a lot of days. Attention sophomores and juniors. Internship and co-op applications for the 2023-2024 school year are ready to be picked up in room 207. Please stop by sometime this week to grab your packet. If you are interested in the arts, 
and music or video industry like engineering, manufacturing, finance, or marketing, Rock Lidditz has the most awesome event for you. Plan to attend this hand-on exploration activity where technology meets art at this lab event industry on April 7th, 27th. Rock Lidditz is a one-of-a-kind production community that supports innovative creativity within the live event industry with resources ranging from design, engineering, and manufacturing through rehearsals and beyond. Rock Lidditz is a one-stop shop to collaborate on any live experience. This great activity, this is a great activity to help you decide if any of the careers that support live events are for you. Be sure to check out the link in Schoology and complete the online survey link ASAP if you are interested. Are you interested in helping to make our school a greener place? Are you free today during Period 3 Act? Then join the Recycling Club with Mrs. Dietz in Room 229. Students will work in groups to go around and collect paper from classrooms, offices, and you'll be helping to make our Earth a cleaner, greener place. For more info, look for the post on the EHS Schoology page and see you during Act. Now, over to the lunch. Hey, fellas. It's me, Wes, here at the sound booth. For lunch today, we have walking tacos, fish tacos with pineapple salsa, Papa John's pizza, crispy chicken wrap, a fruit and yogurt parfait with a muffin, and buffalo chicken salad. Attention all spring track and field athletes. There will be a mandatory preseason meeting on Wednesday, March 1st at 3.15 p.m. in the EHS Cafe for all student athletes who would like to participate on the track and field team this spring. At this meeting, we will discuss the expectations of our student athletes, introduce the coaching staff, and go over some preseason paperwork that must be completed prior to the first day of practice on Monday, March 6th. If you cannot attend, please stop down and see Coach White in room 120 or message him on Schoology. Now, back to the main desk. Students will go to Period 3 for ACT today. Have a great day, Ephrata!